Good day, internet. We are going to be talking about art today. How artists convey meaning through their creations. Now it's obvious, of course, that artists wish to convey meaning, so we're going to look at some subject-specific matter, specifically pertaining to Christian artists and their depictions of the Son of God. Hopefully you've seen this already if you're a fan of Cracked, but earlier this week they released an article that shows us the 11 most unintentionally hilarious religious paintings ever to exist. And oh boy, were there some doozies. Now, of course, I don't wish to make fun of Christians or Christianity or religion in general, of course, but some of these artists have some very specific styles and I'd like to talk about them. I myself am the owner of an immortalization of the Son of God. Really, it's not every day that you find Jesus hanging out by the dumpster with the rest of the smokers. Really, I picked it up because somebody painted this. Like, it was too special to let it go. Plus, his eyes are really penetrating. It's like they follow you wherever it goes. Ooh! Terrifying. Steven Sawyer is the first artist whose body of work I'd like to talk about. And when I say body of work, I mean beefcake Jesus. Granted, this is a rather refreshing change from some of the other religious paintings I've seen, but oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure Jesus never boxed, but I think that's kind of irrelevant considering that Steven Sawyer is my hero. Nothing's gonna rip up your artistic muse like a hard-on for Jesus. If you think I'm exaggerating and that this is an isolated painting, look at these. Especially this one. When I first saw it, the thing I couldn't help thinking about was that scene with the pool and Phoebe Cates in the movie Fast Times at Ridgemount High. Hi, Brad. You know how cute I always thought you were. That was a bit much. But in all sincerity, these paintings just make me grin. Even though they in no way accurately depict Jesus, whatever that means. Jesus wasn't a white man, and I'm pretty sure he never boxed. He probably didn't have tattoos, and I'm pretty sure no matter how much Jesus loves his little children, he wouldn't do heroin for them. But what do I know? The second artist I'd like to talk about is one John McNaughton. Speaking of his technique alone, he is very good. Just the level of detail, and you can tell how carefully each brush stroke was laid out in respect to the rest of the painting. Very gorgeous imagery, even if these paintings do make me laugh, but not in a ha-ha kind of way. McNaughton's paintings are coming pretty close to the line of propaganda with the way he portrays Jesus as an American prophet for values in this country. He also has a lot to say about American leaders, who were frequent subjects in his paintings, both old and new. <laughs> My favorite has got to be The Forgotten Man, which is the title of the painting, in which McNaughton represents, according to him, every man, woman, and child in this country, regardless of class or ethnicity, by making them, you guessed it, a white man. He's supposed to represent all people in America, but he chose a white man as his symbol. And of course, the best thing about this painting is next to him, President Obama is stomping on the Constitution, and James Madison is just like, Dude, Obama, what the hell? But wait, there's more. In chapter two of this thrilling saga, the white man takes the Constitution back. And Obama's just like, Whoa, chill out, dog. And the American people fall on their knees to kiss the shoes of the white man. What else is new? But back to Jesus. In his painting, One Nation Under God, again, McNaughton shows us Jesus defending the Constitution, and to a lesser extent, traditional American values. McNaughton's defense for always depicting Jesus as a white man is that if he's painting subject matter such as this, he wants Jesus to be instantly recognizable. So he paints him as he is traditionally depicted in art, as a white man. Although I think that's a pretty crappy excuse because even if you had a dark-skinned son of God, as long as you put him in robes with a halo or some kind of light around his head, he would be pretty instantly recognizable. I rode into town on an ass. 
Yo mama's ass. Pretty straightforward stuff. Obviously, in the right-hand corner of this painting, we see people who exhibit all of the hallmarks of true American values. A family doctor, a preacher, a marine. I would be remiss and very unfair if I didn't mention the one thing I do like about this painting and the way the subjects are depicted. I'm not making this up. This comes straight from the website. On the right side of the painting, McNaughton did include the modern businesswoman. And in a blurb about it on his blog, he did say how it was important to represent the steps this country is taking towards gender equality. But that small section of the painting continues to be dashed by other parts of it. Like the immigrant, who sees the light of Jesus and suddenly understands what it means to be an American. We have the Supreme Court judge crying and lamenting over all the unconstitutional decisions he's made or the college professor holding Origin of Species, or, and you can't make this stuff up, the pregnant unwed mother. Ugh, just hit and a miss. So there's lots of ways to depict Jesus, even if it gives you a giggle or a sarcastic chortle. None of this reflects badly on Christians as a whole, but rather I like to look at these as very unique perspectives, and it truly outlines how religion means different things to different people. It's very easy to say that Christianity is ridiculous, or that organized religion as a whole is nuts, but what I really took away from this article and from the paintings themselves is that no one person represents the beliefs of any idea system. They may have a personal view, but that doesn't mean it necessarily reflects what the group or religion stands for. Jesus was not a beefcake, and he certainly wasn't a prophet for American values. But it is very interesting and eye-opening to get unique and different perspectives. If you want to learn more about the artists I mentioned, be sure to check out the links in the doobly-doo to their respective websites. There you'll also find links to my Twitter and Tumblr, which you should be sure to follow me on. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And of course, look out for a video next week. Thanks for watching, guys!